Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the Newbrit Workshop. In this video, I'm going to talk about offset holes created with the Mark II path guide system. Now, behind me, we've got my original MFT3 top, uh, which I've had for many years, uh, but I've used many others since this one. And you can see how it's been scarred all over from repeated saw cuts and various uh, little excursions with the router. And one of the things we want to try and avoid is anything that damages the integrity of the 20 millimeter holes in the top. Because the more these are damaged, the less likely any bench dogs placed in them will be accurately located. Now here I have a relatively recently produced top and it's already getting beaten up I'm afraid and this top was created as a direct replacement to go on the MFT3. Uh, it doesn't have offset holes. And if I take the saw away and also the guide rail and then move this piece of wood you can see that in the normal position that the guide rail would go with these Path Super Dogs then you're going to get a kerf line here, which goes straight through that column of holes. So wouldn't it be a good idea if the two tall dogs, whether they're super dogs, path dogs, or whatever dogs you use, were offset slightly either this way or that way. And that means then that your kerf line can go through a space where there are no holes. That's the first point. And the next point is with uh, dogs here and here at the extremities on the standard top, you cannot get a 600 millimeter uh, piece of stock between them. So wouldn't it be nice to solve the problem of the kerf line location and the problem of the capacity here by moving these dogs over a bit that way and over in this direction as well. And if they were placed something like this, then you'd be able to get your 600 millimeter stock in with no problem at all. And it would probably be a good idea to have some additional holes in this line uh, so that your stock can be pushed against uh, the top line here and therefore giving you greater capacity overall. So let's have a look at how we can do that using the Mark II Path Guide system. Now, this is the top we're going to be working on, and I've pre-drilled all of the three millimeter holes already, just to save time in this video. And let me first describe the ones which are shown in red around here. And these are the holes which are in the positions which would be for the standard MFT3 top and then underneath these path super dogs and I've marked it with a cross here and there I've got a position where we want to have our offset holes so they're offset this way by 48 millimeters and offset that way and that way by 48 millimeters that then means when we put a guide rail against here like so that our kerf line uh, will be well away from any of the holes. Now we know we need to produce our offset holes and place them one there and one there. Now if we now turn to the uh, 20 millimeter guide block and see what requirements there are in order to get this position correctly, we know that there must be a pilot hole ahead for the 20 millimeter drill bit to work, but we also know we need to have a three millimeter hole uh, just under here and just under there. In other words, we've got to produce a three millimeter hole here and a three millimeter hole there. And the same at the bottom. So that means we're gonna need some extra holes along this line here and along that line there in order to complete the drilling operation. Now, what I want to do with this particular top is to produce, and I've actually already done it because you can see them, a complete pattern of offset holes 48 millimeters apart all the way around the outside. I'm only going to drill out a few along uh, the, what will be the top end uh, and then that will allow me to push my stock up against here and so on. Uh, but uh, I want the others to sort of future proof this top so that if at any stage I decide to do something different, I can use some of the three millimeter holes which have not been enlarged in order to create whatever it is 
I'm trying to achieve. In order to produce these holes here and these holes here, it is very simple indeed. We start by producing a hole here, which is offset 48 millimeters to there, and then a hole here, which is 48 millimeters from there. And the same at this end here and there. In order to produce this one, I put the hole with the one here with a pin through and then put the pin all the way through into the surface. The hole with the seven is there. And that's all the way into the surface. So that path stick is held rigidly. Now, let me say at this stage, when you first receive your Mark II path guide system, the six millimeter holes here and the six millimeter boss, which is on the pins and also on the two three millimeter guides are going to be pretty tight. And you may find yourself having to insert it carefully and then give it a twist. Insert it carefully and on a hard surface, give it a twist just to get it seated in. And, and that is because the tolerances between this and those holes is very, very tight. And the same is true with the pins. If it's tight, push it in, give it a twist. Now I've used this system uh, several times and I no longer have that as an issue, but it's something to bear in mind. So there we are. Uh, we've put a pin through one and a pin through seven uh, on the standard pattern that was, is below here. And if you now look, there's the one. And if you now look at the 48 just here, uh, this is where we're going to drill a hole in order to create our first offset hole. And of course, I've already done this, but you would do it in the normal way. And that now produces our first offset hole. And we're now gonna do that for the other end by just reversing this. And we can then drill the hole uh, just here like so. So we now end up with our first and second offset holes, one there and the other one at the top there. And we now do exactly the same at this end. There's one and there's the other. So we've now drilled our first four offset holes. And we can now do the ones which are in between uh, those two. If you uh, see the, the hole we've created at this end, I'm going to put zero on the path stick and stick that pin in that hole. It's always easier if you're uh, doing a sort of freehand uh, location of a path stick with a pin is to lift the path stick, locate the shoulder of the pin in the six millimeter hole first, then push it into the hole in the bench. So I've got that end located. And then at this other end, uh, I can put my pin through the 10 position. And that's all the way through the shoulder. And I can now drill all of the holes at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And on top of that, I'm gonna do an extra hole at 48 there and also at 48 here. So we've now uh, drilled uh, the holes which are marked with a cross, plus uh, the ones with the, the plus sign, the 48 there and the 48 here. So now to do the next stage, do the intermediate holes, we're gonna put a pin through zero on the path stick and into this 48 hole that we drilled, which is all the way up there. And then we're going to put a pin through the 10 on the path stick and into that hole, which was one of the 48s there. So we can now drill those uh, holes at the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine positions. And we now have all of the holes along this line. There's just one more to do at this end. It's very simple, put the pin through hole number 10, and it goes into that end one there, and put the pin at the other end through hole zero. Get that in properly, like so. And now we can drill that final hole along that line. So we've done this top line. We would do exactly the same along the bottom. Now, in order to do the ones on the left and the right, we use a similar approach. Hole zero in here and hole seven in there. And then what we're going to do is to drill out the one, two, three, four, five, and six. 
and also the 48 there and the 48 there. And when we've done that, we're going to use those two 48s as our reference point, moving this path stick over by 48. That's a 48 hole that we will have drilled. One there, one there. And we're now going to drill out the, the other holes the same at that side. So we've now achieved our three millimeter holes all the way around the periphery. Now, I really think uh, this uh, next bit is interesting. Besides three, four, five or six, eight, ten, there is a, another relationship with easy numbers where you get a right angle triangle. And that is five, 12 and 13. So if I were to choose five along here, and these this time it's five lots of 48. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to be looking there. 12 up here, there, and then it'll be 13 across the diagonal. And I'm going to set this up now. Now in order to get 13, I'm going to use the 48 at the very end. And I'll put this one in first, because then it's simpler to show it. That's in at 48, and I need to count 13. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So this is 13 here. That fits in, and it's absolutely spot on. So I hope that that simple demonstration shows you that our pattern of holes that we've created with the path guide system, Mark II, allows you uh, to get such a degree of accuracy that you can use different ratios like 5, 12 and 13. And that is absolutely spot on. So here I have the completed top. I've got my extra uh, row across the top here, which is offset 48 millimeters in that direction. And I've got uh, the extra row here, 48 millimeters here. And here are my two uh, tall dogs, they're path super dogs in this case. And so now I'm able to get my 600 millimeter stock in here uh, with no problem at all. And so I could set this up for a cut. And this is 18 mil thick MDF, which I've placed in there. And let's give it a go. By having that extra 48 millimeters that way, 48 millimeters this way, you can now cut 600 millimeter stock on a standard MFT3 size top. Well, I suppose I better do a four cut test. Um, now, some people call it five cut test. I've got a, a known good edge there, which is the fifth cut, if you like. So I'm only going to do four cuts and I'm going to take a trim off this all the way around and then measure the final off cut. Uh, incidentally, when I did the four cut test with the Mark II path guide system, uh, and I made a video about it with a clock just here, um, <laughs> I'd failed to make sure that my uh, tighteners on my saw uh, were snug up against the guide rail. So it wasn't a particularly clever test, I'm afraid, but I've left it there because uh, well, I did it, so there we go. So, here we go, four cut test. So this is the piece we're going to measure, and I'll write the figures down on here. 21.31, on this end, 21.63, and the difference between those two is 0.32. Um, the length of this piece is 495. 495. It's 0.32 divided by 495 divided by 4 equals, and it is three zeros, 0 0.00016. I can't remember what the previous reading was for the 
the other one, but I, I, I think that, that must be pretty, pretty reasonable. Uh, and I can just do a quick check with my square. And the purpose of this is to see whether one can spot anything with the naked eye. There is absolutely no gap there at all, which is what I would expect. Now that four cut test is absolutely superb and you should expect to get similar results whether you're using the original system or the Mark II system. Now let me tell you about the availability of the Mark II system. When the product was launched, uh, Axminster were absolutely overwhelmed with orders and their first quarter's stock went within the first two weeks. And ever since then they've been playing a game of catch up and they've been going absolutely flat out. They've had staff working overtime. Uh, even I've been down there to help out at one stage. And you will find on their website, it will still keep saying uh, that the Mark II system is out of stock, dispatched within three weeks, two weeks, four weeks, whatever it might be. You can place an order and you will get your system within that sort of time frame. So uh, please go ahead and do that. It's just that they can't produce enough to get a level of stock in the warehouse because it's so popular. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.